risk is our business. That's what the starship is all about. That's why we're aboard her. Star Trek is a popular science fiction show from the 1960s that became a series of successful movies and spawned additional series. Star Trek takes place hundreds of years into the future, a utopian time when a united Earth of enlightened humans have put aside war, injustice, and greed to create the United Federation of Planets, a sort of United Nations in space. The Federation is made up of hundreds of species from all over our home galaxy. The original show centers around the captain, his ship, and crew. The bold Captain James T. Kirk played by Canadian actor William Shatner, commander of the USS Enterprise, is part of Starfleet, the exploration and defense arm of the Federation. Their mission is to travel deep into space to explore, peacefully making contact with new civilizations and investigating unknown phenomena, expanding their knowledge of the universe. The most popular and recognizable character is Kirk's science officer and best friend, the logical Vulcan, Mr. Spock. He is the epitome of suppressed emotions, the rational, objective perspective of the scientific method. The third part of this trifecta is the fiery and compassionate Dr. McCoy. The rest of the original crew was made up of an ethnically diverse group of characters. Helmsman Mr. Sulu, Engineer Scott, Navigator Chekhov, and Communications Officer Uhura. This diversity was groundbreaking and reflected the rapid social changes of the 1960s. Star Trek was created by Gene Roddenberry in 1964. Drawing on the popularity of Westerns at the time, it was pitched to Desilu Pictures as Wagon Train to the Stars. Desilu Pictures was owned by Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. Lucille Ball saw the potential for the new science fiction series. Roddenberry was a former World War II Air Force bomber pilot who flew for Pan Am Airlines after the war and eventually served as an LAPD officer when he began writing for television. He wrote scripts for Highway Patrol and Have Gun, Will Travel, before creating his first show called The Lieutenant. Just don't rewrite history. Nobody's trying to rewrite history. Uh, uh, Greg, you know, The Lieutenant has a point. <laughs> hey, Pete, you understand, don't you? In the early 60s, he began writing a new science fiction TV pilot. Roddenberry and his team produced a first pilot for NBC in 1965, which starred Jeffrey Hunter as Captain Christopher Pike, Majel Barrett as his number one, and Officer Spock played by Leonard Nimoy. Chris, you set standards for yourself no one could meet. You treat everyone on board like a human being except yourself. Well, now you're tired and you... You bet I'm tired. You bet. I'm tired of being responsible for 203 lives and... I'm tired of deciding which mission is too risky and which isn't, and who's going on the landing party and who doesn't, and who lives, and who dies. This pilot was rejected by NBC for being too cerebral, but they were intrigued enough by the concept to order a second unprecedented pilot. The second pilot was much more action-oriented, again taking a cue from Westerns, and was a success with the NBC executives. The only character and cast member to return was Leonard Nimoy as Mr. Spock. The alien on the bridge was a visual reminder that this was an inclusive, pluralistic space show. The first Star Trek series, today known as the original series, is known for its colorful palette, bold style, styrofoam sets, cheesy visual effects, and Shatner acting. I want to live! You will. Both of us but mostly for its space adventure format and its idealistic vision. A show about humans traveling through space, 300 years in an optimistic future. Like the mythical Greek odysseys, the ship and its crew ventured into unknown space and had many cosmic adventures, discovering ancient civilizations, confronting space amoebas, traveling through time, fisticuffs, space women, and more. The original series introduced many iconic elements like the transporter, warp drive, the phaser, the hostile Klingons, and the duplicitous Romulans. The first season of Star Trek started on September 8, 1966, and went on for three seasons, each year being under the threat of cancellation and each year saved by massive letter writing campaigns before being canceled after 79 episodes. 
The show ran in syndication for a number of years after its cancellation, finding its mainstream audience and general popularity for the first time. In 1972 was the first Star Trek convention in New York City, and by the following year there was a new animated series produced by Filmation with the voices of the original actors. I saw that, but I don't believe it. A Vandorian doctor. Their planet is quarantined and few people ever do see them. NASA named the first space shuttle Enterprise after they received over 200,000 letters asking for the new space vehicle to be named after Star Trek's fictional spaceship. In 1976, Paramount Pictures, who had acquired the rights for Star Trek when it purchased Desilu, decided it was time for a new Star Trek series, which was to be called Star Trek Phase 2. The whole cast was brought back, sets were built and scripts written, but when Star Wars exploded onto the big screen in 1977, Paramount decided that the new series should be a movie, Star Trek, the motion picture. Your revered Admiral Nagura invoked a little known, seldom used reserve activation clause. In simpler language, Captain, they drafted me. They didn't. I mean you. Damn it, Bones. I need you. Badly. Directed in the grand style of 2001 A Space Odyssey by two-time Academy Award-winning director Robert Wise, known for The Day the Earth Stood Still, The Sound of Music, and West Side Story. The first Star Trek movie was released in 1979. It started a film series that ran through the 80s, ending with Star Trek VI in 1991. By the 1980s, Roddenberry, now in his 60s, was asked to bring Star Trek back to the small screen with a new generation of space adventurers. Star Trek The Next Generation debuted in 1987, starring unknown Shakespearean actor Patrick Stewart in the role of Captain Jean-Luc Picard, commander of a new USS Enterprise. The style of The Next Generation, or TNG for short, was much more restrained than classic Trek. A neutrino pulse would send non-charged particles back up through the atmosphere and would be detectable by Geordi's visor. He can show us that he's found it by modifying the pulse. Make it so. It takes place 80 years after the adventures of Kirk and Spock. The new ship had a new crew. First Officer Commander Riker, the android Data, the empathic counselor Troy, Chief Engineer Geordi LaForge, Dr. Crusher and her son Wesley Crusher, and Klingon security chief, Mr. Worf. Respectfully submit our only choice is to fight. This series introduced, among other things, the holodeck, the materialistic Ferengi, the omnipotent Q, and the unstoppable Borg. Catching lightning in the bottle, the series was a great success and ran for seven seasons from 1987 to 1994. It launched its own series of films, the first one being Star Trek Generations which passed the torch between the old and new crew. Don't let them promote you. Don't let them transfer you. Don't let them do anything that takes you off the bridge of that ship because while you're there, you can make a difference. Roddenberry died in 1991, leaving executive producer Rick Berman in charge. Rick Berman created a spin-off, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, along with TNG head writer Michael Piller which launched in 1993 and took place in the same time frame as The Next Generation. This series changed the format from a spaceship-based show to one that was written around a space station. Commander, later Captain, Benjamin Sisko headed a crew of Starfleet and non-Starfleet characters. Bajoran liaison officer Kira Norris, shapeshifter Constable Odo, 300-year-old Jadzia Dax, the young Dr. Bashir, and the bartender Quark. Mr. O'Brien, and later Mr. Worf, were transplanted from the next generation. Ferengi at the Academy. I'm not sure that is wise. Oh, I don't know about that. Not so long ago, someone might have said the same thing about you. The space station, named Deep Space Nine, protected a wormhole discovered by Cisco from the villainous Cardassians and used the wormhole to investigate the distant Gamma Quadrant on the other side of the galaxy. This show was known for having a large cast of recurring characters with multiple episode story arcs. It was different from previous series in that it explored spirituality and complex political storylines. I cannot give you what you deny yourself. I'm sorry? Look for solutions from within, Commander. 
This show also ran for seven seasons until 1999 and inspired more complex science fiction shows like the Battlestar Galactica reboot. In 1995, a second spin-off was created, Star Trek Voyager, during Deep Space Nine's third season and ran concurrently. It centered around the USS Voyager, a ship thrown across the galaxy into the Delta Quadrant and its captain's efforts to return her crew home to Earth. This crew was made up of Starfleet and Maquis personnel under the command of Catherine Janeway. The Maquis were Federation rebels being hunted by Voyager, so it was an uneasy alliance at first. Janeway's first officer was Chakotay, the commander of the Maquis. They were joined by security officer Tuvok, helmsman Lieutenant Paris, Chief Engineer Bellana Torres, Operations Junior Officer Harry Kim, and the Emergency Medical Hologram. Hitchhiking a ride were Neelix, Kess, and a rescued Borg, Seven of Nine. Maybe it's not the destination that matters. Maybe it's the journey. If that journey takes a little longer, so we can do something we all believe in, I can't think of any place I'd rather be or any people I'd rather be with. To the journey. You're here. To the, the journey. journey. Voyager ended in 2001. A fifth series named Enterprise starred Scott Bakula of Quantum Leap fame as Captain Jonathan Archer. This prequel to the original series was set 100 years before Kirk and Spock and featured humans' first explorations into space and the formation of the Federation. This show only lasted four years before being canceled due to low ratings. This ended Rick Berman's tenure as Star Trek's executive producer and an era in the franchise. Star Trek has been a cultural icon for over 50 years. It has inspired thousands of people to become engineers, scientists, astronauts, writers, and filmmakers. Roddenberry's vision was that humans will evolve past their petty conflicts and destructive wars that humans will use reason and science for the betterment of humankind, to lift them out of poverty, and to bring people together. Star Trek's appeal is not about a fantastic journey into the future. It's about self-discovery. Star Trek points the way to live up to our fullest potential and boldly go where no one has gone before. I'm Lucas. Thank you for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe and share with your friends. It's really helpful for my channel. I will be posting videos every Friday at 5 Pacific time. So I hope you come back for more.